Hello everyone, back to you to today's first video. We're going to have a look at GMA Season model for today's first video. So uh, this is a little extra video that we'd like to uh, get in for you ahead of our seasonal model roundup. So we're going to be doing the uh, next season model roundup for the autumn of 2020 on Saturday. It'll be the first video up on uh, Saturday morning. Uh, we'll get around 12, 13 long range models again and see what we're all showing for the uh, autumn for the second time. Uh, this season. Uh, the JMA will form part of that update, but you can always get a lot of information with the JMA. Uh, and of course, if you've got a, like 12 other models to look at, uh, then uh, then we won't be able to go into detail of what the JMA is showing. So we always like to take this one out and have a look at it in its own terms. So that's what we're doing for our first uh, video of the day. We're going to go through the next three months worth of data from the JMA, uh, taking us from uh, next month from August through to October. Not quite covering the full autumn period, but getting us into the middle of autumn. Uh, so that's what we're doing for this video. Then we'll have a look at where the next 10 to 14 days with our main sort of 10 to 14 day B update coming up later on this afternoon. And then this evening we're going to have our latest update for the United States. So a busy old day at uh, Gaz uh today. Uh, right then, so let's go on. We're going to start off by having a look at the GMA 500 bit of our height anomaly uh, for uh, August from the North Pole view down. So, of course, it's the North Pole uh, of the uh, Arctic just here. We've got the wider Arctic circle around there. And we've got the mid latitudes around here. Blue extrapolates to below average heights, which is low pressure. Yellow, orange and red to above average heights, which is high pressure. So, for August, it looks like Germany is painting quite an anticyclonic picture, really. We've got above average heights to our northeast and also to our west in the Atlantic. However, we are bringing in influences from the jet stream here. So, not completely uh, plain sailing. It's not going to be completely dry and probably a bit of a westerly flow uh, coming through overall. I think we're probably doing something a little bit like that with the flow and with the jet stream. So we have got a little bit of influence there from the jet stream. Um, but that said, there probably is a reasonable amount of dry weather on offer with that as well. Generally, heights are uh, above average, so probably not too bad uh, for, for August from a rainfall perspective. But, but could be a little bit mixed at times, particularly for more northern and northwest parts of the country. Uh, this is September, so this is September's 500 millibar height anomaly. So we're deepening uh, low pressure in the Atlantic. Got an area of low pressure there. And then we've got above average heights, high pressure to our east and northeast. Looks like a bit of a battleground UK scenario, actually, this. Uh, bringing in like a westerly flow with that area of low pressure. But also the high pressure to our east is trying to bring us a drier sort of east southeasterly flow. I think overall it's probably, we will drill down into detail in a moment, we'll find out from the mean wind direction and also from the rainfall anomaly, but I think it's probably this low pressure that for us is the main driver actually, so this could be a little bit more unsettled than it might first appear. Uh, really, so so that could be quite an unsettled-ish sort of signal uh, for September. Again, we will drill down, drill down into the detail in a moment. And then this is October. This is V500 millibar high dominant for October from the JMA. Uh, so this time we've got the low pressure up towards Iceland. We've got high pressure to our west and southwest and also to our south and southeast. Uh, again, it's quite a lot of high pressure around, but for us, we're probably still sort of bringing in a westerly type flow. So that could be a little bit unsettled too, particularly more northern parts of the country. Down in the south, maybe close to that higher pressure, could be a bit drier there. But but uh, but yes, I think this could be quite a quite a changeable sort of three months coming up uh, overall. Um, with westerlies, particularly uh, for northern parts of the country. Let's try and drill down into the detail a little bit then. And uh, we come back to uh, August, first of all. So this is the 500 millibar high to for August. Remember, this is from the mid latitude and tropical view, by the way. So British Isles is in the top right hand corner of the chart. Look at it. Remember, you can't see the Arctic, North Pole, Greenland, Scandinavia, that sort of area on this view. That's all off the chart up here. Um, but we've already looked at that view down, so we know we know broadly what's happening from a northern hemispheric uh, uh, perspective. So uh, for, for August, we've got a ridge of above average height centred in the middle of the Atlantic, but also extending towards the UK as well. That also goes up to the northeast as well uh, to some degree. But it did also, we could still be bringing like a westerly flow and doing something a little bit like that with flow with the jet stream. 
Uh, so the temperature anomaly for August looks like this. Round average, perhaps a little bit above average. Out to our west, it's a little bit below average. Not a particularly big deviation either way. Not too far from average temperatures for August. It's a relatively dry month, though. So, yes, we have got an influence from higher pressure during uh, August. The rainfall anomaly is predicted to be below average. Let's have a look at our mean wind direction. Of course, this will determine uh, what sort of temperatures we get. Uh, so from, uh, it's a little bit hard to make these black arrows out, but I think generally we're bringing like a westerly flow uh, really into the UK. I think generally these arrows are pointing from the west. So it's rather anticyclonic, but also rather westerly, which explains the fact that, that it's a little bit drier than average, but the temperatures aren't particularly exciting despite the, um, uh, despite the anticyclonic signal. So, so coolish westerly winds and quite a bit of dry weather. Probably those westerlies bringing quite a lot of cloud as well uh, for August. Rather nondescript sort of uh, month, really. Uh, in what has been a very nondescript summer, I suppose. Uh, this is September, so then we've got, you just make out these blue colours out to our northwest. We've got an area of lower pressure to our north and west. We've got some higher pressure to our south and also to the southeast too. It looks like we're probably still bringing like a westerly uh, flow, uh, really. Temperature anomalies for September, again, are no better than uh, around or perhaps a little bit above average, but it isn't a particularly big deviation. Uh, and it's going to be a bit more unsettled to the north and west as well. I think the Wales is still, we're still hanging on to drier conditions, but Scotland, Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland is turning uh, a bit wet and average through there. Notice it's also a little bit wet and average to our east as well. I think just generally maybe slightly more unsettled signals uh, for September. Uh, again, you see westerlies are sort of uh, ruling the roost here from the black arrows indicating the mean wind direction. They're sort of northwest to west, actually. So although the temperature anomaly is holding up, it could actually be a little bit cooler, uh, a little bit cooler than the temperature anomaly suggests there, because those black arrows are definitely in from a west to northwesterly direction, which is going to be pretty cool in September. That can be quite a cool wind direction. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so a little bit north of west with the wind. Could be rather cool this September, therefore probably a little bit more unsettled as well than uh, than August, particularly for more northern western parts of the country. But maybe quite a cool, uh, quite a cool wettish sort of September, especially so in the north, being indicated there. And then finally, we've got October. So we can't see Iceland on this view, but there's an area of low pressure around Iceland up here. Uh, and then we've got higher pressure out to our west. It looks like we're still just bringing a lot of westerly sort of influences, really. The wind is still coming from the west, I would have thought there. Temperature anomalies, again, not particularly exciting. They're around to ever so slightly above average. Uh, and also, it's not as unsettled, really. So it's not particularly unsettled for three months, especially for England and Wales. It's relatively dry. For Scotland, it is a little bit wetter, though. Uh, near normal for precipitation, probably. And the mean wind direction still remains sort of west, indicated by these black arrows. They're still pointing from a west to slightly northwesterly direction. Uh, so a lot of west is coming up, but with relatively high pressure, uh, it means there's a reasonable amount of dry weather despite the wind being off the Atlantic. Um, September probably looking like the most unsettled month of the three, actually, uh, with uh, with October and August a little bit on the drier side. September is the one, I think, out of the three that could be rather wetter. Uh, and all, all the months really indicating quite sort of modest temperatures. Nothing particularly exciting doing from a temperature perspective on any of these three months as the wind is coming in from like a westerly direction for uh, for August and also some degree for October and sort of northwesterly uh, for September. Sept out of the three, September is probably the worst, worst month from a temperature and rainfall perspective. So I think uh, with northwesterlies and also lower pressure, September is the one that could be rather cool and wet. Over two months on either side uh, could be a little bit drier and all three months not particularly exciting temperatures.
Okay, just a snapshot of what Mon is showing uh, this month. So it could look very different uh, next month. Uh, we will... Uh, so uh, on Saturday, we're going to do our second season one around it for the autumn 2020. We're going to get all the long-range ones together, or as many as we can, get them all together... And uh, we'll see how the GMA compares to all of the other long-range model output uh, in uh, Saturday's uh, second autumn 2020 season model roundup. Uh, right, so that's uh, that's that one done. Uh, we're going to be back later on with your 10 to 14 day V update, including all breaker features. And then uh, this evening we'll have our latest look ahead for the United States. Uh, but for this video, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.